So George Daniels has been part of the fabric of Chicago since 1969 when he opened his legendary George's Music Room record store on the west side of Chicago. That was just after the riots following Martin Luther King's assassination. But since then, he has helped to shape the world of music and pop culture and business and the community, not just here in Chicago, but across the country. This weekend, friends and family in Chicago are honoring George, and we are honored to have our longtime friend here joining us here today. I don't know where you keep this fountain of youth that you have. You look <laughs> younger every time I see you. It's the music. It's the music that keeps you young. I believe that. I actually believe that. Congratulations. Thank you. On this great uh, honor. I mean, it must be it, it must be something for you to, to look back. You were just reminiscing with me a little bit yeah. during the break of, you know, when you first started all of this. You couldn't have possibly imagined that it was going to b grow and explode the way that it has. No way. I'm just so honored and I'm humbled by the, the memories that other people have of the things that I did. You know, when I walk the streets sometimes in Chicago, people stop me all the time and, and reminisce about things that they remember that I don't remember, yeah. but, you know, some words of encouragement that I might have given. And I'm, I'm really proud of that. And for these uh, artists that came from Chicago to come up with this idea to do this for me, I'm just am I'm amazed. And, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Is it the Chicago artists that you helped to break onto the music scene? I mean, are, are there moments or people that are most memorable to you through your amazing career? Well, the local artists that have become national treasures, I mean, like Common, Twister, uh, we have Crucial Conflict, Do or Die. Uh, actually, the young lady, her name is Corin Federer. Uh, she was with a group called Psychodrama, and she's the one, this was her idea. And, uh, I have to give her credit for putting this on for me. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think of the way th that music is consumed now? It used to be that oh. you'd go into George's. You could actually listen to the records when you came into the exactly. store. Exactly. What are records? That's another <laughs> exactly. thing people don't even Tapes. know. But um, you know, now everybody's you know downloading their music. Yeah. Is, is that good? Is it good the way the music industry has evolved? Well, it, it's. I don't appreciate it. You know because it. It, there's no contact, there's no relationship. I mean, uh, my store and with my, my team, my employees that I had, it, there was that interaction. Right. Payday would come and you know, people get paid and one of the first places would be the record store right. for weekend right. entertainment. And that interaction and the liner notes on albums. and So there was a different type of relationship that the consumer had with music versus today. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, Today you hear cars riding and they're booming, but you don't hear love songs. Right. You don't hear instrumentals. You don't hear jazz. You don't hear blues. Right. You hear, you hear uh, algorithms. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's that's what, polite. That, yeah, that's what you That's hear. a polite way to put it. So we lost two legends oh, uh, yeah. this week, George. We lost uh, Purvis Band, the blues man. Yes. And also the great Mary Maybe. D. Both, I know you were friends with uh, both of them. Yes. But talk to me a little bit about the influence that they had on pop culture yes. uh, in Chicago. Well, Purvis Band, for one, uh, I was a youngster and I used to work at Chess Records. And many people don't know when Beyonce did Cadillac Records, that was about Chess Records. Right. And uh, Purvis Spann was one of those uh, radio air personalities, Purvis Spann, the blues man. The good guys. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> E. Rodney Jones, Purvis, you know, right. uh, uh, Ed Cook, Lucky Cordell, there were so many. And uh, this is when radio, they called it personality radio. Yeah. And he would come on at midnight, right after Herb Kent. But he was such a character. And then uh, he's the one that crowned uh, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. Queen of Soul, yeah. Uh, he used to do not only the, the, the pop uh, concerts, but he did the gospel shows. And right. down the street from George's Music Room is a big church called Mercy Seat. Yeah. And he used to do the gospel shows. Do the shows, shows there. What, yeah. what are your memories of Mary Dean? Oh, Mary. Mary, I would see her at different places, some of the events at uh, the Park West. And uh, she introduced me to Nancy Wilson. Her and Nancy Wilson were very close. But Mary was that uh, icon of television in those days in Chicago to, to see a person of color. There were very few in those days. And for her to do the things that she did and what she survived, showing that the strength of a woman. Yeah. She was just a great, great person, so friendly. Well, I'm honored 
to have known you all of these years. <laughs> I'm so happy that you are being honored uh, by you. so many. The event to honor George is called Flowers and Showers. It is yes. sold out but it is Sunday at the Promontory. And uh, George, <laughs> it's just wonderful to see you out and about again. It's been too long since the pandemic. Thank you for coming by. We really appreciate, appreciate it. that. And also, if I can add, uh, there's an after party after okay. the okay. awards they see, so that, that's right. open. That's that's yeah. where things really start to get oh, crazy, yeah. at the after party. Oh, yeah, that's when I get exercise. There you go. <laughs> On the dance floor. <laughs>